My name is Vipat Raksakultai. I'm an application scientist for molecular devices. I um, support our high content imaging products. And I'm going to be talking about 3D imaging of cancerous spheroids, some developments that we've done uh, in, co in collaboration with another company to enable uh, you know, imaging of your spheroids in a higher throughput manner. All right. So I just want to uh, discuss really quickly about the two different technologies right now for putting micro, uh, you know, for putting spheroids in your microplates for high throughput, higher throughput imaging. Of course, you can put them just in um, a matrix gel in a regular 96 well plate, but a couple of these technologies, one is the hanging drop system, and so what that is is you have a suspension and your cells grow in the, in the center of that, right, you can see on the top, and then on the bottom, uh, you could photo treat and uh, these microplates so that they so that they promote spheroid formation in a an arrayed format to make them easier for imaging and analysis. I'm going to talk about the second on the bottom uh, with work that we've done with a company called Sell uh, uh, Sellable from Transparent out of Japan. So what you're seeing here is a, a zoomed-in version of the plate. So within each well, there are about 100 uh, patterns here that have been phototreated. And once cells are seeded inside the wells, they migrate to these arrays and start to form, uh, form spheroids after about 24 to 48 hours. Um, we can seed the uh, you can put the plates inside the imager, and what, what we're showing is the Image Express Micro XL, and it can automatically acquire these plates because they're in a 3D four well format, in uh, multiple colors, up to five, and you know a 3D four well plate you can do it within uh, in a little bit less than 15 to 20 minutes or so. And there's a lot of literature out right now just showing the differences uh, between. 3D culture, uh, cell culture systems and traditional monolayers, traditionally plated cells. On the top, what you have is a traditional 2D cell culture system compared to the bottom of the 3D, so within the sellable plates. And you can see that when we treat these cells with, um, with a compound, then we'll be able to see the differences in, uh, between the two culture systems. The 3D models are more resistant to uh, you know, chemotherapeutics. Okay. And then also another study showing the results between the difference of size between small spheroids on the left and large spheroids on the right. You may not be able to make out the words here. So this was a necrosis and apoptosis assay. The coloring here is blue is for the nuclear stain, the DAPI, the cow, so that's the um, apoptotic stain, and then um, ethidium, uh, ethidium heterodimer here in red. And just showing between the vehicle control and when you treat it, uh, with, a comp with a control compound, the size of the spheroid, as you can see, once we have a large spheroid, these make them more resistant to drug treatment than when you have a smaller spheroid size. So what helps as well with the plate type is that you get more uniform examples of your cells. Okay. Whoops. Okay. And then just another example uh, showing a couple of different dose uh, treatments of these DLD1 cells in response to two different compound treatments in both nuclear intensity and also EDU uptake. So that's a marker for proliferation. And then this, uh, these two movies are just showing the time lapse. So one thing, instead of just traditional endpoint assays that we're seeing is more interest in performing live cell assays, monitoring your cells over time. That way you're getting a, a single well, but multiple, lots of data, multiple um, data points within the single well. So I'm not sure if that played as well. So this is the color merge movie of the three different um, stains here. So green is the viable cells, and then red, these are our necrotic cells. And then when you compare them in time lapse, so you'll get a lot more information you know, just for the same cells. We're monitoring these same cells over time. And uh, this also plays in well with some capabilities of the hardware, which I'll go into uh, towards the end of the, of the presentation. Okay. 
and then just showing some, uh, uh, starting to talk a little bit about the analysis. One analysis that, uh, simple analysis that uh, is requested is also just, you know, monitoring spheroid size and area. And this is just showing an example with a white light, a non-labeled sample. We wanted to get uh, the size and area of this structure. And using the software well, that's coupled with the Image Express Micro, we're able to get, you know, multiple parameters out. So it's just total area, perimeter, um, and um, you know length and width, and you know various parameters for this structure here. Right. So taking it back a little bit, you know I've talked about you know uh, within a plate, multiple plates, and four heights throughput. If you wanted to uh, you know, do some more development work and use the instrument more in a research mode, I'm going to outline a kind of a workflow for that. If you wanted to maybe just study less samples but get a little bit more information. In this case, we're looking in a 96-well plate imaging at a 2x in bright field. What we wanted to do was just identify. Uh, they're just in a regular 96-well, or yeah, 48-well plate, I'm sorry. And we just wanted to identify our spheroids, our objects of interest, and then move to a higher magnification so we could use the instrument more of like a standard um, upright microscope in this case. So what we're showing is that we selected our regions, our, our objects of interest, and we wanted to investigate them further. And the previous data that I showed was at a lower magnification, 4x and 10x. In this case, what we're going to do is acquire z stacks. So that's acquiring an image at a varying height level, so because uh, we may not be able to get the whole structure in focus with a single image. So just showing on the top, and this is a wide field platform, so we're capturing all of that um, light, including the out-of-focus light. Typically, this is a confocal application. And just showing as you're stepping through the sample, different parts of it get in focus while uh, at a different z-plane or a different height. And then at the bottom, what we've done is we've applied deconvolution to these, uh, to these 3D data sets. And what this is doing is just, you know, very simply put, taking away some of that out-of-focus light um, using a software algorithm. So we can approach confocal you know, results with just a wide field platform. Right. And then within the software as well too, so for 3D analysis, this is something that these researchers are also interested in. And I'm going to show a simple example of what you'd be able to do. Uh, using the 3D data set, we're able to uh, reconstruct this data into a 3D for, um, you know, viewable, oops, sorry, into a 3D render able to do some visualizations such as rotating the object to get a better idea of how the you know, different structures are within this 3D space. And then we'll be able to do some simple quantification. All of this is within the MetaExpress software that also runs the instrument. Okay. In this case, what we're doing is we're identifying pixels of interest. And then in this case, we're not interested in the central uh, glob of dead cells. We more so wanted to count these cells along the periphery so we'd be able to perform a filtering step to exclude um, large structures or very small structures that could be debris. Okay? And then in this case, here's those, these are the me objects that I'm measuring. And there's multiple outputs that we'd be able to get, not just counts, also such as volume, um, intensity information. If there are multiple colors in this, in this experiment, we'd be able to calculate um, co-localization as well, which is something that's important to uh, you know, researchers doing this type of work. And then just showing an extension of this type of approach, which would be monitoring these changes over time. So this would be uh, imaging the spheroid on day one, and then just showing the comparison two days later. So just sh showing that difference and then just showing another example. So you can see that we are able to you know, stick with the same sample and then image at the same, t you, know, you know, multiple time points later. Okay. A little bit about the hardware. So I've been talking about the Image Express Micro XLS platform. So it's about the size of a benchtop instrument. We have an example over at our booth. You can uh, stop by. It's very, it was custom engineered for speed and for image quality. So you'd be able to get about 50,000 wells per day, depending on your application. It uses a combination of laser autofocus for, uh, you know, for plates, as well as an image-based autofocus for speed and flexibility. And within the system itself, you could have four objectives that you could configure yourself, as well as five filter cubes. 
and as you can see, you know, sample flexibility. We're able to do um, uh, anything that's pretty much in the footprint of a microplate, so 96, you know, 24 six well plates up to 1536, and then we can also accommodate slides as well. I mentioned you know, being able to approach confocal, being able to take some of that out of focus light uh, for 3D applications in the software. This is after we've acquired the images. There's also what's called a digital confocal app um, option for um, during acquisition. We'd be able to uh, you know, increase your contrast uh, you know, while we're acquiring those images, while we're setting up our experiments. So a couple of features, one is the 16-bit scientific CMOS camera. Some of the benefits to this over uh, you know, typical CCD detectors is going to be you have an increased dynamic range for, uh, going to 16-bit as well as an increased field of view. So these typically have about a three and a half times uh, larger field of view than a CCD camera. So that means you're being, going to be able to capture more objects in a single image, reducing the need for stitching and, uh, and tiling. And then the 16-bit, the increased dynamic range, means that you'd be able to, in the same image, you know, detect low and high expressors. And then a solid-state light source. So this is uh, gaining popularity in the field these days. And so this is um, you know, over bulb-based systems. It just means a reduced uh, maintenance needs, you know, more uptime, more uptime imaging, a longer life, lifespan. Okay. A couple of options for the image access micro. So one is environmental control. So this is going to enable these long-term live cell assays by controlling for carbon dioxide, humidity, and CO2, or in temperature, you're going to be uh, mimicking an incubator environment. So we've had some customers that are maintaining cells inside the instrument you know, for up to seven days. Transmitted light, so you'll see a transmitted light tower uh, here. So this will enable you to you know, perform light, you know, label-free imaging, or you just want to pop your cell, your plate in, and uh, you observe and monitor your cells. And then fluidics. So this could be used for fast kinetic reactions, where you wanted to add a compound and immediately view the effects on your cells, or you could use this for any type of media change uh, during uh, a long-term experiment, for example. Okay. So I talked about the scientific CMOS camera and. and and the solid state light source, just a couple of uh, pointers, you know, bullet points about that uh, to reiterate what I said before, which is about three times the number of objects in a single field of view. And you can enable whole well imaging. I've got a couple of examples of that in a later slide. And then uh, solid state light source. So this means increased uptime by because of an increased lifetime. So typically about 10 to 15,000 hours versus about 1,000 for a um, metal halide bulb and then uh, an electronic shutter versus a mechanical shutter. So all of that leads to um, decreased maintenance needs. Okay. Oops. Sorry. Oh. And sorry, one more thing to mention would be just uh, flexibility around the light sources as well too. So we have flexibility outside of the standard white light, uh, solid state light source to include if you wanted to do uh, UV imaging or uh, near infrared, so that would include the size seven wavelengths. Okay. So I mentioned capturing whole wells. So this is uh, something that you know, our customers have been very excited about the new platform um, you know, being able to use this for. So at 96 well, you'll see that you can get a whole well at a 2x objective. So typically, you, know, you would need maybe four images at once to get to capture the whole well in 96 well plate. At 4x, you're able to capture the whole well of a 384 well plate. And then at 1536, so this may not be applicable to everyone, but for our high throughput customers, this has been very helpful, being able to acquire the plate as a 384 well plate. You can extrapolate this to say, you know, with the 384 well plate at a 2x objective, you'd be able to do the same uh, thing, which is capture four wells at once. Also, this uh, stage precision is very helpful here for objects and structures that extend beyond a single field of view. So I'm going to focus in on this cell in the top left. Say you had processes or uh, tissue slices. The stage precision allows us to be able to um, tile these sites together without needing to acquire with an overlap, which is typically how, your, um, how larger structures are captured so that they can be stitched together. And this increases your software um, processing time. So just showing these 
and with a zero spacing or zero overlap, we're able to still um, connect these processes together. And then I mentioned previously digital confocal. So I, I mentioned a couple of options that we could, with 3D, uh, with 3D data sets or data sets with a lot of background or out of focus light, and then we would be able to remove that in uh, you know, post-processing with 3D deconvolution. We're also able to remove that while we're acquiring. On the left is, a, is an example of an image taken normally without the deconvolution turned on, and then on the right, you can see that these structures now are much more in focus, there's a higher contrast. So uh, an added benefit of this is being able to uh, use a shorter exposure time as well. So uh, for those that are interested in throughput as a benefit, it's an added side benefit. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about the software. So MetaExpress is based on Metamorph. If any of you are familiar with that, uh, Metamorph um, is the backbone, and what MetaExpress adds on top are plate uh, utilities as well as uh, integration with a database for larger data sets. Setting up an experiment just takes a few clicks, and you're able to uh, save these for uh, used as a starting point later on if you had a predefined acquisition protocol. And then uh, once you've acquired your images, there are several analysis tools available to you, depending on your needs. So what this is doing is just showing you an example of acquiring a plate. So it's a 96-well plate with um, you know, zebrafish, actually, inside them. Just showing how uh, the system is going to look while on the software while it's acquiring the images. So it's building essentially you know, a virtual plate here. And then once it's finished acquiring, we'll be able to review our images. And seeing the plate at this high level allows us to really be able to pick out you know, any types of you know, discrepancies. And so, for example, if you had cells, you'd be able to tell if there was some type of cell distribution issue or whatnot. And these are low resolution thumbnails. So uh, clicking on any of these will pull up a high resolution image to review and take on to your analysis. And then just talking about your analysis options. So in order of ease of use to, com to um, you know, power and you know, complexity, we have application modules. So these are pre-configured analysis routines for common biological applications. And then on the right, we have what's called journals. So this is similar to an, a macro in Excel, you know, stringing together uh, different uh, commands and then, you know, and then uh, automating that process. In the middle is what we have a, a recent release called Custom Module Editor, and I'll talk about that in a couple of slides. But just showing you the range of application modules that are available. So on the bottom is the, uh, the name of the application module, and on the top is the you know, typical biological application. So it's not set in stone which one you would need to use, but just to show you what uh, our customers have previously used these application modules for. And then just while you're setting up an analysis, just showing you that you get real-time interactive results. So on the top, you get a graphical result. And on the bottom, you also get a numerical table. And those are links. So we have these yellow cells are highlighted. And that's reflected in the numerical table. And that happens vice versa. So this allows you to get individual object results immediately. Custom module editor adds on to that by being able to add either pre-processing or filtering steps uh, if you wanted to use an application module as a step. But for example, I wanted to remove debris or I only wanted to, um, I only wanted to analyze a certain population of these cells. I'd be able to do that within the custom module editor. And the workflow is very similar. We'll be, um, in this case, we'll be teaching the, so the software what we're defining as objects. We're using a click to find tool. And it gets selected. And also, the preview, previewing our analyses are also interactive here as well. We'll be generating a graphical mask and then also a you know, numerical table that we'd be able to refer to. Once we've run the analysis over the whole plate, now we can get also a visual QC of how um, the results are by, uh, by configurable heat maps. So a lot of the workflow is we have an idea of how our cells or how our plate is going to 
um, react or how our um, samples are going to react to our treatments and we want our images to confirm that. When we are setting up our analysis, we want the mass or the, what the software finds to reflect what we saw in our images and then on a larger scale, always confirming back what we, what we saw um, once we run it over the whole plate. We want to make sure that we're able to identify our controls very easily. That means the software was able to. And if there's any type of trends, we'd be able to see that as well in the numerical results. All right. And then just in summary, so I talked about the cancer um, cells and spheroids and using you know, the combination of labware and instrumentation to enable you know, high throughput screening or getting um, higher throughput imaging or getting more information out of it, making or ease of use. And just some experimental results such as you know, uniform size uh, could um, help with the consistency of your, uh, of your work. Uh, and then also that's enabled by the labware and the instrumentation. And then also, you know, about the platform, you'd be able to image, you know, multiple sample types from beads, cells, tissues, you know, whole organisms that I saw, saw that I showed, as well as complex cell culture um, situations. And then, uh, you know, the software and the hardware, it's flexible to be able to acquire all of that data and analyze it also on the same platform.